Welcome everyone to this video. I am Aditya Bhattacharya and I am going to show you how to talk to your dataset using conversational agents. In this particular video, we are going to build an application using which you can have natural conversation with your datasets. So we are going to build a streamlit application which uses Langchain and OpenAI models to interact with the dataset. As an application, I'm going to show you how to interact with the dataset in a CSV format, but definitely you can try out other formats as well. But as an example, we are going to see how to load a CSV file into this application. And then we can just give natural queries to get insights from the datasets. For example, if you want to see a box plot on some of the variables in the dataset, you can see that using natural queries, we can build a nice box plot out of it. Or if you want something like a pie chart, we can also get that from the dataset. So we can use different kind of methods or different kind of queries and get various insights from the datasets using simple queries, which is written in natural language. So are you excited? Yes, let's get started. Now, before getting started, let's discuss the key ingredients or the key tools that we need to build our conversational agent application. So first of all, as we had mentioned before that we are going to build a Streamlit application. So we need to have Streamlit. So Streamlit is an open source Python library that makes it easy to create and share certain beautiful and custom web apps for machine learning and data science. So in just a few minutes, we can build and deploy powerful applications using Streamlit. This is a quick example of an application which is built on Streamlit. So similarly, we are going to use Streamlit as the front end web application. However, for the back end part, we need something called as Langchain. Langchain is a framework for developing applications powered by large language models. So it's like an intermediate layer which can work with different large language models to make different applications. So it's like a certain layer using which we can build powerful language model applications. Langchain comes up with different type of functionalities. It can interact with various models. It has different prompting options. We can also select different type of data sources using Langchain. We can also do necessary operations which are needed to build an end-to-end -end RAG application. What exactly is RAG? RAG stands for Retrieval Augmented Generation. We are going to see how to create such RAG applications as well in future videos. But here we are going to understand the RAG pipeline so that we get a quick glimpse of how to build such applications for different use cases. Last but not the least, we do need a lot of large language models, especially we are going to use OpenAI's large language model. Now, OpenAI, as we know, is the uh, organization behind building something like ChatGPT, but OpenAI is also uh, working on different type of generative AI applications or generative AI models, which can be used for various type of applications. The most promising or one of the most promising uh, models from OpenAI is GPT 3.5 which was the initial model for ChatGPT. However, right now there are much more advanced versions such as GPT-4, which is also available in ChatGPT. But OpenAI's large language models are certain cutting edge natural language processing models designed for various applications and showing exceptional language understanding and generation capabilities. So I do recommend all of you to visit the links as well for the different ingredients that we are going to use and it will help you to understand more about these different components. But let us also understand the RAG process and how does this entire process work, which we are going to use even in our application. It starts with the data loader using which we will be loading our data sets. So in our case, our data will be in CSV file format. We are going to load CSV data sets into our application. Now, once the data load operation is completed, we are going to transform the data into various chunks Chunks are nothing but smaller components of the datasets, which we pass through something called as an embedding model. An embedding model is a type of model which encodes the string information, the textual information 
in our data into certain numerical vectors. It converts the raw information which is present in our data sets into a vector format like this. It's like a collection of different numerical values which is used by our underlying algorithm. So it creates certain embedding vectors and these embedding vectors are later stored in a vector database. Now this is about the process of creating the knowledge base for our application. Now in a rack process, the knowledge base is one part of it. The second part is where the user enters a certain query. A query using which the response is processed by a large language model in a much more easy and cohesive way. Now the query is also in natural language data, it's in a text format. The same query, so the same text data goes through an embedding model. Now this embedding model again converts the text information into an embedded vector. And this embedded vector goes through a semantic search process which tries to look into the vector database and tries to find the top contents or top matched results. It's like a search process. So the search happens in the database and the top results are retrieved. Now the top results are then passed to a large language model, say for example, at GPT or some of the other OpenAI models. And the large language model would try to get the final answer from all these retrieved results. Finally, the response is prepared and the user gets the final response. Now this is the entire rack process and how it works, but it's just the theory part. Now we are going to see how to build it using Python. So let's get started. Let us discuss about the code to run the particular conversational agent. To run our CSV agent, we need these different Python libraries. To make the application, since we have used Streamlit, we need Streamlit. To deal with CSV datasets, we need the Pandas framework. In order to do certain parsing, we need the JSON library. Since we will apply the LLM models from OpenAI, we need the OpenAI library. For some path related things, we need OS and some regex command, which we will need to parse the responses of the LLM model. We need the regex library. For certain plotting related stuff, we need matplotlib and langchain for various options which are available in langchain to load the dataset to run the different components of the agent and make the responses much friendly. These are the different Python libraries which we need to run our code. In order to install them, you can use the pip installer and install them one by one or the code will be shared with all of you so you can directly uh, install the frameworks from the requirements.txt file. Now, let us see the working of this code first of all. The code actually starts its execution from the main namespace. And that is where the main CSV agent application would run. Right now, as you can see, it is running in my local host, in my local system. The execution mainly starts from this function. This is the main streamlit function for the CSV agent application. This is where the execution of the main function starts from. It is the main streamlit application for CSV analysis. In streamlit, in order to mention the title, we just need this particular function dot title, which will give the title of the application, CSV assistant, as you can see in this case, and the command to give some kind of input or some kind of value, text value that we want to display in the application, we just need this write function. So it will give a message which will be visible to the users. To upload a file, we actually need this file uploader method from Streamlit. And right now we are only accepting CSV files. And that's why the type is set as CSV. Once the file is uploaded, once the uploaded file is available, we can get the necessary file details. We can also write the necessary file details so that it will be displayed to the user. For example, if I browse and open this particular file, it gives additional details like file name, file type, and file size. So these details will be displayed to the user. The CSV file will be then read using pandas data frame. So basically the contents of the CSV file will be converted to a data frame. We are also displaying the data frame. So this is where we see the data frame. 
using Streamlit, we can display the data frame as well. Then we have a text input from where we will collect the user query. So the user query is over here. Whatever the user enters, it will be then taken as an input from the user. Put it here. Okay. So once the user query is, uh, you know, like taken after this run button uh, has been pressed by the user, the user query then goes into this function, CSV agent. This is the main function where the chatbot agent is running. So the CSV agent is actually running over here. The CSV agent is nothing but an agent which is created using Langchain using this create CSV agent method. So it is an LLM, uh, you can say model. That's where we are using that OpenAI model with temperature equal to zero, which means that we don't want the model to hallucinate. That's why we have set the temperature as zero. It will not try to produce creative output, but rather it will try to give more factual responses. Then we have the model type. For this application, we are using GPT 3.5 Turbo uh, and 0.613 version. We need the file path because we are reading the data from the file directly. That's why we need the file path. Uh, here, verbose basically means if we want to debug something. So, uh, you know, in the uh, command line, we can actually get the different messages. And it's typically useful when we want to debug the application. We can make verbose false. Then the other uh, debug or logging related messages will not be displayed. Right now, we are using an Langton agent. Basically, these are the OpenAI functions. Uh, it's available in the Langton library. These agents or functions act like certain tools which help us to get the necessary prompt. It helps us to, you know, make the LLM model work in a certain way. And this is another parameter which ensures that there are no parsing errors when we are passing the input. So we, have, we have put this entire thing under a try and accept block. So if there are any error, it will come over here in the exception part and we can see the error message. But if it works, we first need to get the tool input. It is the, this is a typical format in which the tool input is taken. It's like a dictionary where we take the name of the tool. Right now, we want the output to be in a Python format because we will do some kind of analysis using the query, which uses Python. And from the Python responses, we try to get the responses uh, or maybe let's say the insights or even some kind of graphs that we want to generate. And initially, the user message is passed as an argument, but then based on the response, we try to change it. Here we are doing some additional JSON parsing and if needed, we can also display these messages. But once the input has been received, this input has to be passed to the agent. The agent will try to run and create a response. And based on the response, we will pass the response again back to this particular method. So here the response will be captured. Once the response will be captured, it will be passed to this particular function, extract code from response. So this is the main function where the Python code from the string response from the LLM will actually be captured. Then we are using some kind of regex command to match the code pattern. Basically, we are trying to extract the main Python code from the response. And once the match has been found, once the main code snippet or the, you know, the piece of code that will help us get our answers, once it is extracted, we will then get it over here. So this will be the code to execute. And if code to execute has been received, we can pass it to this particular method. This is again uh, a method which is used in Python to execute certain piece of code. So we have to pass that code. We have to pass this global function. Basically, make sure that whatever you know data frame that we are using or some kind of additional Python libraries that we are using are available. And then here, whatever response that will be given, it will be captured in this bigger object. And then using uh, pipe dot and in streamlet, we can display the graphs. So this line of code is mainly used for displaying the graph to the streamlet application. Okay. And if there are errors. We can always handle this error using this except block. We will we are just you know displaying it right now. Uh, otherwise, if things work properly, it will just execute. So this is the simple method. And finally, we have a divider. A divider is nothing but it creates a small section over here. So let's say if we want to run a query like of count plot let's maybe put something like violin plot okay 
for maybe BMI for diabetic and non-diabetic patients. Let's say this is our query that we want to see a violin plot for the BMI variable for diabetic and non-diabetic patient. Let's see how it works. So once we have given the query, we need to press run. Here we are seeing that the application is running. Basically, it is trying to understand the query and based on the query, it will try to get the necessary response. And here we go. We have a nice violin plot for both diabetic and non-diabetic patients for this particular variable. Now, let's say if we want to understand if there are outliers in any of these variables, Type this query. We will run again. The CSV conversational agent, it will try to look into the data set. It will try to capture the necessary insights. It will try to do the necessary processing. And from there, it will try to calculate the outliers in the data set. And look at this. Here, it was able to automatically calculate and even find outliers. So it says, yes, there are outliers in some of the variables in the data set. Here are the variables with outliers and the corresponding outlier row. It even predicted the exact row where the outliers are there. For blood pressure, it says that a zero blood pressure might be an outlier, which is absolutely true. Like blood pressure cannot be a zero. For insulin, here it says that maybe an insulin of 210 is an outlier. It might be possible. This could be an outlier value. And even here, it says that a diabetes prediction function of 0.235 is an outlier actually gave an indication that yes there are outliers in the data set and we would have to be careful about it okay? so this is again an example of how we can use such a conversational agent and simply talk to our data set without any kind of python code especially for non-technical people or non-technical consumers of ai this is a great application nobody needs to know the nitty gritties of python or you know machine learning models or any kind of analysis with the data set they just need to import the csv file they just need to have natural conversations whatever questions that they have they just need to put as a query and they can just simply get the answers by using it so this is a great tool for non-technical folks i would say and for technical folks uh, this kind of tool i think would be quite interesting because they can directly use it especially for any other type of data sets, they do not need to just copy paste or run the code again. They have a nice tool and they can just use with any other data set and it makes their analysis much faster. So this is how we can actually build a conversational agent which can talk to CSV data sets. Now CSV is just an example, but I strongly recommend all of you to check the different options which are present in LangChip and you can actually build a general purpose conversational agent which can talk to different type of documents. So that's it for this particular video. Here we have seen how to talk to your data sets using conversational agents. Basically we have created a conversational agent application which can actually talk to CSV data sets. So that's all for today. Uh, thank you for joining in. And if you would like to uh, follow me, please do make sure to like, subscribe. You can take a look at my website or you can search me on LinkedIn and I'll be happy to get connected with all of you. Take care, everyone. Thank you.